What is up my new event friends? Today I'm going to talk to you about the awesome command line utility said and I'll show you a few ways that you can substitute text, delete lines, or insert new lines into your files or streams of text which is exactly what said is supposed to do. If this is your first time on the channel welcome hit that like and subscribe button if you like the content and you like command line tools and new of Without further ado let's jump into said and how you can use it. First off let's talk about what the name actually comes from which is a stream editor for filtering and transforming text, which seems pretty straightforward and is something that makes a lot of sense once you know it. Sed is one of those tools that can be really awesome when used in combination with grep. And if you haven't watched my video on grep, I would highly recommend it after you watch this video. Sed really hinges on the Unix philosophy. If you summarize it down to a few key points, it would be write programs that do one thing well, write programs that work together. And the really important one where Sed is highlighted is write programs to handle text streams because that's the universal interface. So said can take in streams of text via a file or from an echo command or some other input. If you didn't know already, quotes are a big deal on command line utilities, and they're really important for command line tools like said and grep. Basically, what you want to remember is when you're using said, you usually want to rep things in single quotes. This is the main course of said, and if you don't get anything else from the video, this is the one thing you should remember, that said is used to replace text. If you take a look at the command that I have right here, you'll see that it's said, and then an argument of how to operate on the text that we're going to either pass in via file or via a text stream. You need the S, which designates that it's going to substitute. And then the one are the characters that you're going to match against. So if we rename this a little bit more, this will be match. And this would be the thing that you're going to replace. It matches everything and then replaces. And it's going to do this per line, which I'll show you an example of that here in just a little bit. All right, I've modified our example here, and you can see that we are echoing a string and then running said on that input. What we should see here is just the word replace that is echoed out to our console. And we see that whenever we run the command, if we wanted to run multiple replacements at a time, then we would use the dash E option. And you can see this highlighted here where we're replacing all the lowercase H's with a capital H and all the lowercase W's with a capital W. The slash G on the end means global. So we would run this across all the letters. If we had multiple H's or multiple W's, then we would replace all of them using this command. Once we run this, we should see that the H and the W are uppercase. Awesome. I mentioned this before, but said is line oriented. So it's going to look on each line in your input and try to do a replacement on each one of those. I have a file here that has three lines that's going to have the words one on each of those. And on the first line, it's going to actually have two of them. So you can see that the text one occurs on the first line twice and then only once on the other ones. Now, if we run our said command, which we'll do S one, all uppercase one, and then we pass in our text example. Then when we run this, we should see those getting updated. And we do. Notice that the second one does not get updated. Now, if we wanted to replace all of them, we would, like I said before, pass in the G and we see all of the ones get updated to uppercase. Now let's say that our text file has a mixture of uppercase and lowercase ones, and we want to replace all of them agnostic of what the case is. To do that, we can give it an uppercase I at the end. So you can see in our text file here, we have a mix. And then if we update to add the capital I on the end, but keep the G because we want to replace all of them across all the lines. When we hit this, then we see Fred in all the places where one used to be. Now let's say our input file has changed just a little bit and we only have three lines and it's Bob, Tom, and Fred. Now, if we only wanted to output or print the lines that were changed, then we could modify and use the dash in option with a P at the end. I'll show you how to do that here. As you can see, I added the dash in to the front. With that option, we're taking control of how printing works and we add the P with a space after our replacement command. And if we run this, we should only see one line, which is Bob and it's being changed to Fred. So we should see Fred being output. And we do. So we only see the information that has changed here. If we only wanted to print out the first two lines of the file, then we could do a one comma two with the P option, and that should give us the first two lines. Now onto deleting lines where you have a match. To do that, you use the slash D option. And what this command in front of you will do is delete all the lines that have Bob on it. If we use our same file with Bob, Fred, and Tom, then we should see that Bob gets deleted. And we do, so that is how you delete a line. Let's say you wanted to capture all the lines that were modified. To do that, either you can use the arrow or the caret here, to output to a file or the W option built into said where you can give it an output file. If we run this command, then we'll see it printed here. And if we cat our output text file, 
then we see only that Bob was changed. Something that you'll commonly see used with said is doing in place replacement. What this allows you to do is not create an additional backup file or output file and instead make all your changes and write the file back to the original one. To do that, you use the dash I. Now, if you're on a Mac system like I am, you'll actually need to give it either an empty string, which is gonna make a zero length file or a backup file. And you can do that by providing a dot back. And what that'll do is example.txt.back. So if I run this, and if I look in our temp directory, then I'll see that example.txt.back file. And if we print it out, we see what has been replaced. All right, the last thing that I'm gonna cover with the said command today is how to add new lines. And you have a few different options. So you can add lines before, after, or replace the current line with the match. To insert a line before, we'll do said, single quote, and then we'll match on Bob because he's our favorite. And then we'll do I, which is how to add before. Next, we will add our line. So add new line close our quote, and then we'll use our example txt file. And you can see that we add a line beforehand. To add a line before, you do a very similar command. So you do all of this, we'll match on Bob, and instead of I, we'll use A, and then new line here to be added, close your quote, and then our temp example txt, and we have a new line added after Bob. The final example, we're going to replace that line. So again, same thing where we type Bob and then a C for changing the line. Then we will replace this line, close it, temp and example. And you can see that it replaces that line. If you enjoy videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if you're using said or some other tools and if there's things in NeoVim you want me to cover. Appreciate you watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks y'all.